What's up, live viewers? We have an interview today. Now, this one's going to be a little different because uh, we're going to be talking about a very serious subject and topic. This is an interview with Sightseeing Sally. Now, it's a pretty long one, so I'm going to break this down into two parts. Part one, pretty much the timeline of what went on and how this all came about. And then I'll break it down. And part two is pretty much the uh, who she contacted and uh, the results of all that. And then the little wrap up. And then I will put it all together in one big long video and post that as well. But for now, part one, Sightseeing Sally. All right, what's up, blind viewers? Okay, now these interviews go a little differently than what's going to happen today. I am here with a lovely young lady, and we are going to talk about a serious situation. So, first of all, everyone, sightseeing Sally. How you doing, Sally? Good. Thank you, blind viewers. How are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. First of all, I want to say uh, welcome back. I hope you get this figured out and continue to post because we do miss you thank you i'm i'm planning on being back yes that's great news um and then again i want to thank you for coming to me and asking me to do this and help you get this out i really do appreciate it yes i certainly am happy that um i came to you and asked you to do this for me i think by speaking out uh, with you, I'll be able to get my message out effectively. Okay, so I'm sure everybody, just about everybody knows what's going on. But for those who uh, happen not to know what the situation is, uh, Sally has been stalked, harassed, and uh, bullied uh, through the Internet and other means. But uh, that's, that's what's basically going on. And uh, we're going to give her a chance to uh, tell us the avenues that she, she's taken uh any responses that she got good bad and different um if she's gaining any traction uh so we're gonna let her tell her story and uh so the first thing i have to ask is uh so when when did this all start sally well i think we need to kind of go back to the beginning of when i started my channel i started uploading videos in january of 2017 and it probably would have been around June of last year in 2017 that an individual that goes by a certain moniker, and I'm not going to repeat it right now just because I've decided that the less I say the name, the less uh, publicity the person gets, the better that it probably is. I think that's very so that wise. Individual, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's very wise, I think. That individual started posting comments on my channel. And at the time, I didn't know anything about the individual. And I treated that person like everyone else who comes on my channel. And that is, I interacted. I replied back to comments. I even, when I was first starting my channel, I did regular shout outs to viewers and in one of my earliest vlog type videos i gave the person a shout out now fast forward to about january of this year and the individual started posting videos himself to his own channel and I had become aware of that because he had mentioned that to me through one of his comments on my channel. So being that YouTube encourages creators to interact with one another, and I was at the time pretty active with interacting with a number of other YouTube creators on the platform, I went over and viewed the videos. And in the first few videos, 
he was doing kind of what I thought was like a Dave Hughes type, uh, you know, look at uh, channels. And my channel came up as being one of the channels he was focusing on. And initially, the comments were positive. And then over time, they got to be more critical of, of what I was doing on my channel. Yeah, well, let me, let me add that. Uh, like you said, uh, uh, anyone of us that are, you know, that put up videos, uh, that is part of the process. You, uh, you know, you read the comments, you answer comments, and, um, well, just like you, I started watching your channel, and so he's like, you know, i seen that you watch me. I'm going to go over and check you out. So we, we support each other, and we leave comments. We interact with the, the folks that are our followers or subscribers. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's not like you did anything out of the ordinary it's what we all do correct that's exactly right so over the course of time like i said i noticed the comments or the commentary he was doing about my channel was more negative and i tried to make a few jokes about some of the things that he said and at one point i just said straight out like hey what's the deal I was always decent to you when you commented on my channel. Why, why are you giving me such a hard time with, with your commentary? And, and that I'm paraphrasing that because I don't remember my exact words, right, but right. that was the gist of the message. Yeah. And the, the individual responded back with an apology. Wow. So I took that as a positive sign that, okay, whatever whatever it was that was going on we were going to like move beyond that and it was going to continue then like as a normal youtuber to youtuber type relationship right right i you, didn't see it as being anything more than that right you you uh expressed your displeasure or whatever and he said oh i'm sorry didn't realize okay and yeah you so you go on from there yeah that, okay so so far seems pretty normal to me <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that's the adult thing to do you know do just confront it head on and ask straight out you know instead of me going back to my channel and all of a sudden saying that's you know what i mean it right. just to me just seems the adult thing to do to just ask the question right so from there, the individual uh, started posting videos that were less Dave Hughes style and more uh, vloggy type style showing places of interest and things like that. So I found myself watching the videos and I found a lot of it interesting. And I did respond by commenting frequently on, on those videos. In turn, the individual came over and was doing more positive comments on my channel. And again, to me, it just seemed normal. It seemed like, for example, uh, Stingray1975 is somebody who I've developed a, a YouTube-type friendship with. And it just, so to me, it just seemed like a normal thing. Right, right. Yeah, I see you. And, and, and I like with you, too. You yeah. know, we've gotten to talk, and it just seems normal. Nothing weird or right. strange. Yeah. I know when, you know, Stingray or a couple other people, they do streams. I, I see you in there quite often. And, yeah, there's, you know, regulars that kind of go around to certain people. So, yeah, I can I can get where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, where, where about in the time frame are we now that where, you're, where we're up to? We're about uh, towards the end of march early april okay all right so then right around the middle of april i started making some changes to like my channel description my channel art cover art or whatever the and the emoticon i was trying to revitalize things it seemed that um I don't know. I just thought it was time for a change for what what I had there, and I was kind of hoping that now I was back in Wisconsin to start promoting some of what I was going to be doing around here. It just seemed kind of like the right thing to do. 
I also had gotten my stickers finally, and I was going to be selling them. Um, so the way I decided to approach that was to include a PayPal link rather than get a P.O. box and yeah. deal with that. Yeah, <laughs> that was a pretty smart move. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the individual said back to me that, oh, I see you added PayPal to your channel. You've updated some stuff. I think that's a really good thing. And then within a couple of days, I noticed I had gotten a new person on my Patreon. And initially, whoever it was came on with, I guess, what you would say, like an, an anonymous type uh, persona because they didn't use their real name and they used a picture of a cat or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, cool. Somebody knew. I wonder who it is. But, you know, I didn't have any idea. Well, within probably 24 to 48 hours, the individual revealed himself to be the person who this is all centered around. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, that's super nice. And then within, again, um, it was probably within that it was in a very short period of time the individual also sent me an email and in that email they indicated that they knew where i lived Ooh, that's not good yeah yeah and i was really disturbed by that right off the bat i was like oh so marty which everybody knows his name now, Marty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's no longer the mystery man. He has right. a name. <laughs> no, Marty is like, you know what? There's a good chance that somebody is going to get your personal information at some point. Don't worry about it. You know, once it's out there, it's out there. Because I was worried about being doxxed. I'm like, well, okay, so this person has this information. What are they going to do with it? Yeah. Kind of thing. And then Marty's like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. You're worried about something you don't need to worry about. So I'm like, okay. So I approached it like I would just treat him, continue to treat him like any other of my patron supporters. I sent a postcard and thanked them. I sent an email thanking them for it. Uh, there was an additional, I think right off the bat, PayPal contribution where he had put a note in saying uh, for, I think because the way Patreon is set up, it's a month later after. So it was basically the note was indicating to me for that month until the patron kicked in sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. I and I thanked him for that. And then everything was at that point seemed okay. Again, I was a bit upset by the fact that he knew where I lived, but Marty had reassured me, you know, it'll be okay. Don't worry about it kind of thing. Yeah, I mean <laughs> It's it's odd to say, but yeah, I mean, if anybody really wants to find out things, you know, now with the internet, if they want to dig and they want to spend the time, they're going to find it out. So, I mean, not that it's not a big deal, but it's not as big a deal as before the internet days, you know? Right, right. And I mean, you know, I tried to look at it from the point of view, too, is, okay, how often in the past did, you know so-and-so that you know from like your hometown um you've heard rumors about them so you do a quick ch -ch 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 right. look up on the internet to see oh is that really true kind right. of thing <laughs> right yeah you know out of curiosity so i was trying to i guess you know give them the benefit of the doubt that it really wasn't that big of an issue and again marty you know I figured if Marty thought it was something I should be concerned about, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. 
makes be perfect sense about it. for sure. So I sent that postcard. Now I don't know. I don't know that the individual knows this, but and so this would be like news. The individual posted a video showing himself ripping up the postcard, and I happened to catch the video. It was only up for a short period of time. And I don't know what caused the individual to rip up the postcard. I just know I saw that person ripping up the postcard. And then at that point, in my gut, I got this sinking feeling that things weren't going to be be so good. Yeah. Yeah, that seems a little strange. Yeah. So, and with patron or Patreon, the person has to be an active patron in order for you to block them. So in between the individual pulled out, so the individual posted the video of himself tearing up the postcard and the individual pulled his patron donation. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, if that's the case, then maybe things are just going to be like, it never happened, and we'll move on from this. Yeah. You know? So then the individual must have changed his mind. I'm, I'm speculating because I, I don't know. I didn't ask, and all of a sudden I know I get a, a notification from Patreon saying I got another patron donor. And I looked, and it was the individual again. Mm. And I'm like, okay, this, I'm not going to be dealing with this. So my first instinct at that point was to block them off my Patreon. So then this is, I guess this was around the time where, when things are starting to click and you're starting to go, okay, this isn't like everyone else. Something's, something's a little off. So this is yes. kind of when it really kind of started to kick in. Yes, exactly. And this, again, is in April. This is all transpiring in April, probably like the last two weeks of April. Gotcha. The, the, the time frame is. And so then after I blocked him off Patreon, because obviously Patreon, Patreon must give him like a notification of some sort saying your Patreon pledge has been declined or whatever. Yeah. Um, I got money put into my PayPal along with a note from him saying he got noticed that it was blocked. If that was my doing, please refund his PayPal money, etc. So I took the time. I, I dropped it up in email. I asked my mom to listen to how I wrote it to make sure that I wasn't sending any kind of inappropriate message. And basically, the email was saying that I suspected that the individual might be feeling more towards me than what would be a friendly type YouTube uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I use the word relationship, but I, again, I had my mom you know, give me that sanity check on it to make yeah. sure I wasn't like sending any weird message with it. That was a smart and move. I, said, I didn't think it was appropriate because I am, I have somebody in my life and I'm not looking for any other type of relationship. And I didn't think it would be appropriate for me to take money from somebody that had had those types of feelings for me. And so I sent that off and the individual responded back. Um, they seemed to be okay with that saying, okay, if that, you know, if that's the case, yes, please refund my money, you know, and I did that. Um, oh, what was the other part of it? Oh, the individual also said when um, I sent the money back through PayPal, then they must have been able to send me another note because I got a note back saying that they thought 
that the mister or marty was like an act from the channel <laughs> that he wasn't for real okay all right yeah so it's starting to get even stranger yes so then i decided to write a letter to dave hughes uh, I was going to send him stickers anyway, so along with the stickers, I sent him a note, and I just said, look, I have this issue that's going on. I'm not really sure how to handle the situation. I said that I did it. I made, I tried to make light of it by adding a joke at the end saying I didn't want to end up like, and I used an example of a celebrity that had been shot yeah. and, and, and killed by an overly um, fanatical type fan. Uh, but my message was clear that I was looking for some sort of guidance as to how to handle the situation because I'm thinking, well, all right, so I've, blocked them now on Patreon and you know the individual thinks that I'm making stuff up or whatever and they're not really backing away and so Dave called or well he asked to call me so I I called him then after I confirmed that it was really him right and talked to him on the phone and that's where he said I should just block and ignore I'm like okay so this is at the beginning of May now and I was thinking to myself if I just block and ignore the individual without putting out like some sort of notice like saying hey you need to leave me alone if it would continue to escalate and I would have to go to the police the police are going to ask me right off the bat, did you tell him to leave you alone? Yeah. But I'm going to be like, well, no, I just blocked and ignored him. Well, I just felt like it wasn't going to be sufficient enough. So I then drafted up another email and sent that out on May 4th. And in that email is when I told him that I thought it was inappropriate that he was, you know, trying to figure out personal information about me, wanting to know the nature of my relationships, um, you know, stuff like that. I said that I thought he might be, and I said I thought he might be stalking me on other channels because I had some weird stuff going on with a uh, a user that I had never seen before. And so I just suspected it was him yeah. and um, told him that I found it creepy and a form of harassment and that he just needed to leave me alone. Well, then that just like sparked everything that I showed in the video um, with regards to the flurry of emails you sent back to me Um the videos he started uploading like right after and it just it seemed like it made the situation a hundred percent worse yeah that seems like that's what kind of really pushed him and triggered him um well i know when you put out your your video about the whole situation not the recent one before right you know that said you know i'm i'm off of youtube and everything Mm -hmm. it kind of uh i guess you'd say sparked a bunch of interest it was like okay what's she talking about so i know there was an influx to his channel and I, i'll admit it, i was one of them i went on I was like what is this dude and i went and i watched and i saw one of the videos um it was the one with the balloons where he had the little those little balloons with the 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 candle or whatever is underneath and it had your name all over it and i love you and all that stuff and sent it off um, and then I was like, okay, yeah. And I was like, all right, no more. I'm not going to check this guy out anymore. Um, I did see a couple other, I don't want to call them parody channels, but channels that took little clips and was saying about things. Um, 
and I saw him saying something about that you were a shapeshifter and your eyes changed. And I mean, some really weird, I mean, as a dude, I was kind of like, whoa, you know? So I could imagine how you felt as a female going through all that, you know? It, oh, man. And um, I was going to say, so I asked you a question, actually, that you answered, which was, uh, you know, what would you say to anybody that said that, oh, yeah, well, just ignore it and it'll go away. So you already answered that question. It's just not, you know, something. You need that paper trail. You need the steps. So if it does get to that point that you can say, yes, I did this, that, that, that. And I think that was a very smart move. Thank you. Yes, exactly. And um, right after I posted that video on May 22nd, where I said I was quitting YouTube, uh, one of my viewers, followers, uh, contacted me. She stepped up. She's been wonderful. I've gotten to know her. I consider her a good friend of mine. Um, she is a practicing attorney in Pennsylvania. And granted, she cannot give me legal advice because we're, we're talking different states, so right. she can't legally represent me. But she was able to offer perspective on the situation because, you know, she has a general knowledge of the law. She has over 20-some years' experience practicing, and she specializes in you know, family law where she's dealing with divorce cases where there are instances of stalking and harassment going on between spouses and things like that. Oh, so she's yeah. very familiar with that. And her take on the steps that I did, the I mean, I forwarded her, every, you know, the emails, the interactions between us, and her take on it was... She thought that I handled it as best as I possibly could at the time. And now, she thought it was good that I told them yeah. to leave me alone. Well, after the after the, the video where you said you you know you were you about had enough, um, I'm sure you were flooded with uh maybe not directly but indirectly if you you know, still paid attention to what was going on YouTube. I'm sure you were uh, flooded with tons of opinions of what you did right, what you did wrong, w why you let this happen, and all that. Did did you see all that, or did you kind of block it away for a while? How did you handle that part of it? Um, I did initially, you know, read some of the commentary, Marty. Um, he did a lot of like the fielding of reading comments and things like that for me. So I wouldn't have to uh, necessarily deal with all that because I was at that point just like so fed up, upset, you know, it was causing me a lot of anxiety. I wasn't sleeping good at night. I was angry. You know, and it was evident in the way I was acting towards my family members. Yeah. You know, I was very angry about what happened, what it was doing. You well, know, that's me. a that's a good point that you just brought up. That you know, we see we see a YouTuber that we watch, and you know, you, you kind of think you know people, and you know, you know, you know, you don't know them, no, but you know, you watch somebody mm -hmm. for a year or more, and you're like, I, I kind of know this person. And um, we only see what you put up there for us to see. And, I mean, it, when something like this goes on, I don't think people take the time to stop and think that, hey, you know, this is affecting her sleep. This is affecting her relationships, her real relationships in real life with the people that are around her, her loved ones and everything. And I think that's something that a lot of people have overlooked in this whole situation. Yeah, I, I agree. Because what is shown on YouTube, and I know Evie Nova, I bring her up because she also stepped up uh, right after I put out that I'm quitting video. Uh, she did a segment on her own channel talking about stalking and harassment. Um, she pointed viewers um, about, talked about my situation. She reached out to me 
personally. And um, she's made a very good point on her channel talking about how what you see on YouTube is only a small fraction of what goes on in a person's life. Yeah, that's true. Very true. And, and the other thing I wanted to say about that is I put that video up. Um, I'm quitting YouTube. I know it was very disturbing for for people to watch. I know my family, my parents especially, were upset by by that. They had no idea. You know, it's not like I'm calling them up every day, yeah. you know, unloading on them. And so for them, it was very disturbing. But I thought I was doing the right thing by sharing that. I think it's important for people to see that, as shocking as it is, how upsetting it was for me. Because people, I don't think, necessarily realize when they're sitting there on their keyboards and they're saying stuff to people. And granted, I, I, I want to make sure that people understand there's a distinction between being a troll and online stalking and harassment. Yes. But my point that I'm trying to make here is that people don't think about necessarily before they fire off whatever message they're sending online or through a chat or a Facebook post or whatever about the consequences of what that can actually do to a person. Yeah, I mean, so, you have, you know, we're all human and we all have feelings even the, the biggest, baddest, toughest guy who's, oh, I just let it roll off my back. Everybody has feelings, and you all have that breaking point. And, yeah, if you get one or two nasty comments here and there, eh, eh, it might sting a little bit. But when mm -hmm. it is just a constant barrage, it can tear a person down. And, yeah. again, we're just talking right now about the silly troll stuff, which is I think is not what you were dealing with at all. Mm -hmm. And I would also like to address the fact that yeah, you, uh, disturbing. Yeah, you, the video was a little disturbing. Um, it made me sad. It made me angry. It made me a lot. Of, I feel a lot of things. But I think the main thing that it did was it made other people aware. Like, I had no idea. I, I was clueless, you know. <clears throat> and I know, like, right after that, it was, it was the big buzz. And I know a couple other female YouTubers um, that said, oh, this person started popping up in my stuff and everything else. And uh, they took care of it right away because you let them know. Uh, yeah. Other people that weren't aware, they had, you know, mutual subs or whatever that said, hey, yo, 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 that dude, pff, out. This is what he's doing. Out, out, out. So... Yeah, as disturbing as it was, it was a service that made everyone aware, and uh, the target was there, and it was like, no. And so, yeah, once uh, you kind of put the brakes on it, it was like, okay, who's next? And by you outing the whole situation, it made people aware, so there wasn't a next, at least not easy next let's put it that way so i for one will thank you for and i know it had to be hard to sit there in front of the camera and spill your guts and show your emotions like that but yeah i think it was it was needed agreed i think it was needed too i know i've gotten some criticism on that uh there are people that think i fed into his obsession by doing that or gave him the extra notoriety that he shouldn't be getting. Uh, but if I hadn't done it, people still wouldn't know. Right. The other women YouTubers would still be clueless as to what, what's going on. Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, I was doing a lot, one of my Thirsty Thirsty live streams, and, you know, it was like somebody said, hey, he's here. And I was like, what? You know, and it was like, okay, and get him out, and he's gone. But mm -hmm. before your video, he'd have been there. I wouldn't have known anything. I wouldn't have had a clue who this person was. So, yeah, I, anybody who says that it was feeding it, no, it wasn't. It was, it was warning other YouTubers 
especially the females, and letting all their subscribers and commenters know that, hey, we're all on the lookout for you, girl. We got your back, and I think it was awesome. So Thank I, you. for one, if nobody else, I, for one. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do here is go back, 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 back.